one thing that's important to uh, know about this story is it is a primarily a local story. You're not going to see this in the national news, but I contend if the national news catches a whiff of this, then it would not surprise me if they blow it up into a national news story. Now, I, I would like to think they wouldn't do that, but honestly, I really would not put it past them. And you'll understand why when you hear the nature of this story. Mayor of Carbon Hill, Alabama, a guy named Mark Chambers, he posted a viral meme, which was very low quality, had very poor graphics, and that's the reason that I'm not going to show it to you. But essentially, it said something to the effect of what we're doing is, uh, oh, here it is. I, I can actually read the meme because I, I didn't want to show the graphic just because it's so horrible, so poorly edited, so uh, pixelated and th just thrown together. I, I know that I'm getting off on a side note here, but. It really bothers me when people don't do do well with their graphic design. But anyway, so this is what the meme said. Quote, we live in a society where homosexuals lecture us on morals, transvestites lecture us on human biology, baby killers lecture us on human rights, and socialists lecture us on economics. Well, that's all true. I mean, each of these categories do lecture us on each of those things, even though they really have no standing to do so. I mean, in each case, you have a group of people that have completely jettisoned and ignored the thing that they are trying to lecture us on. And so there is some legitimacy to this meme, even if the, the meme itself is poorly constructed, the actual content of it is not unfounded. But this led to a series of unfortunate events for this uh, mayor. He's the one that originally posted this meme. And then Mayor Chambers' friend responded by saying, By giving the minority more rights than the majority, I hate to think, uh, think of the country my grandkids will live in unless somehow we change, and I think that will take a revolution. All right, so I'm right there with him up until the point where he gets that that's going to take a revolution. And this is a sentiment that I have seen reflected in other conservatives, other people that are right-leaning, which I think is woefully misguided. And the reason for that is, if you're thinking about the revolution, there has only been one successful human revolution that did not end in anarchy and tragedy and all kinds of innocent people being killed for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And it's the American Revolution. The American Revolution is the only one that actually worked the way a revolution is supposed to work. And the reason for that is that they went through every single possible legal channel to change the system and were met with scorn and uh, really intentional sabotage by the, the government that they were petitioning to change or to give them some kind of representation. They tried over and over again over the course of really two decades and got nowhere. And so when they had exhausted every single other option, they decided to go for a revolution. The way that the mayor responds is even worse. He responds to that comment by saying, the only way to change it would be to kill the problem out. I know it's bad to say, but without killing them out, there's no way to fix it. Now, there's a couple of reasons this is a really, really dumb thing to say. Look at the groups in the original message. Homosexuals, transvestites, baby killers, and socialists. Now, these are four groups of people I do not agree with. These are four groups of people that I think are incredibly wrong in their pursuits, be they political, moral, whatever. But I do not believe that you have to kill all those people in order to get the political result that you want. The whole idea of America is predicated on the idea of free speech and the free exchange of ideas. We don't have to agree with one another to coexist. In fact, that's the reason the American structure is put together the way that it is, is so we don't have to kill each other to be able to coexist. Again, going back to Thomas Jefferson, it is that bloodless revolution that he's talking about. That we may not agree with one another, but when it all comes down to it, we have an election, we decide who our representatives are going to be, and we agree to submit to that authority. 
even if we don't like the results, even if we want to take it in a different direction, that's fine. That's an American idea too, opposing those who are in power, but we try to do so peacefully. This idea that we just go out and en masse kill all the homosexuals and socialists and transvestites and people that support abortion, that's not a productive way to have that conversation. Another thing that's important to point out is he says in this statement, he says, well, I know it's bad to say, but if you know it's bad to say, don't say it. If you know that it's morally incorrect to say something, don't say it. If you think that it's going to offend someone or make someone uncomfortable, okay, well, maybe you shouldn't say that, or maybe you should because sometimes speech that offends people or speech that makes people uncomfortable is beneficial. But if you think that it's morally wrong to say it, mm -mm, never a circumstance where you should say that. But what kills me about this is we're not living under Sharia law. We haven't created a theocracy because this is what happens in the theocracies in the Middle East. That people that don't agree with their religion or people that do things that their religion says is bad, even if they're not hurting anybody, that you just go ahead and kill them. We're not living in Sharia law. This is America. We have a constitution. We don't kill our political opponents. That is not the way that this is supposed to work. Now, WSFA, our news partners, they reached out for a comment with this guy and he denied writing it. And then later saw that he did actually write that and then called back and corrected himself, which I think to me leads that, and he didn't really think this through all the way. I think this is probably one of those things not dissimilar to Donald Trump, who just seems to tweet things at like 3.30 a.m. when he happens to be on the can. And I still am convinced that that's where a lot of his Twitter comes from. But nonetheless... That's probably what happened here. This is not something that he thought out very well. This is not something that he he tried to consider all of the cost, consider all of the implications that this might have, and he just kind of offhandedly put it out there, which is a cautionary tale to everybody to be more careful about what you're posting. Think about how it's going to be perceived, and, and this next point really brings that to a head. WSFA said in their article about this, quote, Chambers then fumed about privacy and his Facebook page not being for public, although Chambers acknowledged his page's privacy settings were public. He later changed the Facebook page to private. Okay, again, another bad stereotype, especially about older people. This is true of younger people, too, though. I've seen it in, in people my age and younger. So it's not just old people, but it, it's, it's more true. There are more old people that take the stance on it. And I think it is, and I'm, I'm not in any way making fun. I realize they grew up in a different culture. I get that. I'm not belittling them or, or trying to, oh, look at a bunch of dumb old people posing. No, I am not in any way degrading them. This is new technology. They did not grow up in a world where information was this easily accessible. It's understandable that they don't think of it this way. Because in the mind of them, and, and like I said, I've seen this in younger people as well. It's a computer. It's inside their house, and because of it, they think of it as kind of their private journal. Or if they are responding to a message that a friend sent them, or sorry, they're responding to a comment that a friend gave, they treat it as though they are speaking directly to that person and to that person only. Nothing on the internet is private, period, end of discussion. Do not post anything on the internet that you would not feel comfortable saying on a crowded street corner where everybody could hear you. I mean, we all know this. If we're sitting in a restaurant, it's crowded, and we know that there are people around us that can hear us, we talk differently, even if we're talking directly to a person that is sitting across from us, we speak differently and acknowledge that that conversation is not, there's not an expectation of privacy, which would be the legal standard. Facebook is a broadcast medium. I am broadcasting on Facebook right now. I'm very familiar with this. Facebook is a broadcast medium, so... Anything that you would not say from a megaphone on a, stra uh, on a crowded street corner, don't say it on Facebook. I can't tell you the number of times that people have posted something and uh, usually something political uh, or something with uh, something about the Bible, and I'll just comment on there and correct them or give my own opinion on it, and they'll say, why would you, why would you do that? Why are you uh, arguing with me on here? I didn't put this up here to argue with people. Well, if you didn't want people to challenge you on it, you shouldn't have posted it on Facebook. 
And I remember I even got into an argument with one girl that was saying, well, my, my Facebook wall is just for me. Um, yeah, that's, that's not how a Facebook wall works. If you want it to be just for you, then set it to where only you can see it. You can do that. That is a possibility in your setting, but you should never post anything to Facebook. You shouldn't do a, if you want to rant and you want to rant in a private way where nobody will argue with you, either do it to yourself in your room, record it or write it down, but don't post it on Facebook because that's not the purpose of Facebook. It is a communication venue where lots and lots of people can see you. And in this case, where anybody can see you. And so this mayor, the, uh, the idea that he's saying, well, it was a private message. Well, first of all, it's Facebook. You should have enough sense, especially as a public official, to realize that Facebook is a broadcast medium. And secondly, would it be okay for you to have said privately to a friend, well, we're going to have to kill all the gays, the transsexuals, and the, uh, and the, the baby killers and the socialists. We just got to kill them all. No, that doesn't change the moral value of your statement. Your statement is still wrong. Your statement is still reprehensible. The fact that you can't you can't get all uh you know bent out of shape about people talking about it just because they happen to see it on Facebook, especially because Facebook is a private place. But even if it was private, or sorry, Facebook is a public place. But even if it was private, even if you said that privately to somebody and then that person published that it still doesn't change the moral value of what you were saying. And so this is about as bad a weak sauce argument against this as you can possibly get. And what ticks me off is people like this guy, people like this guy give fodder to the left, which is constantly criticizing the right for being somebody that just hates people and, and wants to get rid of all the gays and get rid of all the people that disagree with them. This guy gives fodder to those people. He is providing ammo to the left as somebody to hold up as somebody on the right that really does hate people because it doesn't get much more hateful than saying, I just want to kill all the people that disagree with me. Now, let's take it in its proper context. It's pretty clear, even though this is a, this is a huge misstep and we have to call this guy out on it and should because what he is saying is pure evil. Nonetheless, let's put it in its proper context. This is a small town Alabama mayor who posted something on Facebook before thinking it was stupid and he ought to be held accountable for that. But the thing is, they have to go to the most obscure of the obscure to be able to pull this story out. They have to go to a no name politician running a small town in rural Alabama to be able to find somebody on the right that's actually saying, Let's just kill the homosexuals and the socialists. When you're talking about people on the left, this is a sentiment that is shared by a unfortunately growing plurality on that side. When you've got people like John Rogers right here in Alabama, somebody who is an actual state representative saying that we have to just, you know, kill everybody that disagrees with me, saying that we ought to just abort uh, Donald Trump Jr. because he disagrees with me we can go to mainstream people on the left and show you example after example after example of people saying that people disagree with me that shouldn't be alive. I can't tell you the number of times we've done that on this show. But when it comes to the left, they have to go to the most obscure person on the right that they could think of in order to get this story. It does show that there's a difference. It's evil both ways. We ought to denounce it in both occasions, which I've just done. But nonetheless, I do think that it's important to realize that the left has to dig a lot deeper to find the crazy on the right. On the left, there's an awful lot of crazy right there on the surface. You really don't have to dig very deep for it. You know, you really should like this video and subscribe to the Tactics YouTube channel. Oh, what's that? You want to know what's on the channel before you subscribe to it? Oh, no, no, no. It's like Obamacare. So you got to subscribe to find out what's on it.